Hello, everybody, and welcome to this section on Nmap. I'm actually recording this in 2020, so the video you're going to see here shortly is from 2019. We've had a little bit of issues with the command that I show, which is netdiscover, on how to find your IP address of the Keoptrix machine to actually be begin scanning this machine. So I'm going to show you a couple of alternatives, and then I'm going to let the video play as it was before, and you'll have several options on how to find your Keoptrix machine and hopefully find the IP address. So at this Keoptrix login page, we can cheat just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give you a login here and just go ahead and type John as the login. And I'm going to show you the password before I delete it. The password is going to be two cows two, just like that. T W O C O W S two with the T and a C capitalized. So go ahead and type in John and then two cows two. And you can see we are now logged in as John at Keoptrix. Now, this machine is very, very old, so the typical IF config or IPA or any of those do not work on this machine. However, we can do a quick ping, for example, to anything we want. We could say 8.8.8.8. It could be an internal IP address. It doesn't even have to be an IP address that resolves. But we could say ping, and as we ping, I'm going to hit Control C here, you can see that we see ping from 192.168.4.53. That's my IP address. Now the IP address you're gonna see here in the video shortly is going to change. However, as of right now, the IP address I'm seeing for Keoptrix is 4.53. Now we also use NetDiscover, but there's actually a cool tool we can utilize as well. Now if we come into the network, you can see that I have a IP address of 192.168.4.51 for myself. Now there is a tool built into Kali Linux that is called ARP Scan. And you could do a syntax of a dash L with that, hit enter, and it's going to pull off an ARP scan as well, which is what NetDiscover is doing. What we need to be looking for, and you could see this is kind of my home network, what we need to be looking for is VMware. You could see VMware is sitting here at 192.168.4.53. The only one to be on the lookout for is possibly yourself, which we're at 51. I don't see in this list. It didn't pick us up. So I could see 192.168.453, VMware should be the only one that's running, or if you're using VirtualBox or something like that, it should show up here. So kind of identify it either this way, or you can come in and identify it through the Keoptrix login itself. Of course, you can use NetDiscover as shown in the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go into the video on scanning with Nmap. Okay, so now we have Keoptrix up and running we need to determine where it actually is, and then we can do a little bit of scanning. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up into our applications and open our terminal. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And we're going to run a tool called NetDiscover. So before we can do that, we need to type in ifconfig and identify your IP address. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this first three octets here. And we're going to run NetDiscover. So NetDiscover is going to look like this. We're going to say NetDiscover. We're going to do a dash R for range. We're going to paste in this and do a dot zero slash 24. So what are we doing? We are going to be using ARP to detect all the machines on the network. So you should be familiar with ARP from the Linux lessons and from the networking lessons. So we're going to attempt to use ARP to address anything on the network and we're sweeping the entire subnet of slash 24. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And in a second here, our machine should start popping up and it does. So remember our host was at 139. This host here at 134 is likely our culprit. So you should only have two machines in network because we're only running two. You can ignore dot one, dot two and dot two five four. We are only focusing on the one that looks similar to ours, which is 192.168.57.134. So now we know our machine address. We can start attacking it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control C, which is going to kill this session here. And I'm going to hit Control L to clear my screen. All right. So I'm going to open up a notepad and we'll just store this away for a rainy day. We need to first talk about what we're going to be doing here. So Remember before when we ran our TCP three-way handshake, we had something like sin, sin, ack, and ack, right? And we can just say sin, ack, kind of like this to combine it. So we've got three parts. 
we've got the part where we reach out to a port and we say, hey, port, are you open? And the port says, yeah, I'm open. Let's go ahead and make that connection. And then we go ahead and connect to it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a tool called Nmap. And Nmap stands for Network Mapper. Now, what Network Mapper is going to go out and do is it's going to scan for open ports and services. Now, this scanning is going to take place and it's going to identify these open ports with something similar to this three way handshake. So we're just going to modify it a little bit. Now, what the process that we're doing is called stealth scanning, and it used to be written out like this. Now it's just done by default and we'll get to the switches here in a second. Don't worry about that. Just we're going to be running stealth scanning and now this stealth scanning used to be stealthy, right? That's why they called it stealth scanning because it used to be undetectable. Nowadays, very detectable. If you run Nmap in a network that has good security, you're going to get picked up. Although being a pen tester, I would say Nmap probably doesn't get picked up in 80% of the assessments that I run. So don't expect clients to be running good security, but just know that even though it says stealth, it's not stealthy at all. So the stealth scanning, why was it stealthy? Why was it called this? Well, if we go back to the three way handshake, what the stealth scan does is it does the sin. It says, hey, I want to connect to you. And the open port, if it's open, will say, yeah, I want to make that connection back with you, friend. And what's going to happen is we're just going to say, you know what? I'm just kidding. I'm going to send over this reset flag. So this RST. Why? Well, that means we don't actually establish a connection. So like when you go out to a website and you go to Google and Google loads, well, guess what? You establish that connection. You establish that three way handshake. What we're doing is we're going out and we're saying, hey, I want to establish connection. The port reveals to us that, yes, I am open for connection. And then we're going to say, just kidding. Let's not make that connection because we never established that connection. Then it was technically stealthy. So that's what we're going out and we're doing. We're never making connections to these ports, but this is how we're identifying them as open. So we're going to use a tool and we're going to use a tool like this. We're going to say nmap and we're going to say something along the lines of dash T4 dash P dash dash A. Now you have no idea what this means and I don't expect you to, but I'm going to walk you through these. And what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, nmap, I have a choice in speed and that choice in speed can be between a one and a five. One's really slow and five's really fast. Now the default for me has always been four. Now I'm teaching you my preference. It's always been four. Okay. And we utilize this and I think five, five's okay, but five kind of fast. Maybe you're going to miss something. Maybe it gets caught. The slower, the better in terms of detection. But in the instance that we're going to be running it through this course, we're going to use four. Anytime you do like a Vuln hub or something like a hack the box, which you're going to see here in a few videos, you're going to run T4 just because you're not worried about this detection. You're not worried about anything. So T4 is a speed purpose. Now, dash P dash. Well, this stands for I want to scan all ports. OK, we could say something like dash P or we could just have dash P left off completely. Now, if we leave off dash P completely, it's going to scan what are known as the top 1000 ports. The top 1000 ports are your most common ports. So think of like port 80, port 443, uh, 139, 445, all the ports that we co covered in the networking section going to show up again here. But there are 65,535 ports out there. We want to scan every single one of those, because what if, for example, there is a service running on port 47,700? Well, that's not a common top 1000 port. If we don't scan all ports, then we're going to miss that port. And that could be something incredibly valuable to us, right? So I always scan like this dash P dash. You can also do things like scan specific ports. You could say like 443 or say you wanted to scan just for web servers. You could do 8443, something like that. Or you can mix in, say you want to scan for DNS as well. You can add in 53, et cetera. You can scan for specifics. And we're going to get into that in a little bit of a later video on why we might do it this way. But for now, for the beginner lesson, dash P dash, we're going to scan everything. 
And lastly, we've got this dash A in here. So dash A stands for everything. I want to scan all of it. I want you to tell me, I want you to tell me the version information, the operating system information, anything you can tell me, fingerprinting, etc. Now this may all be confusing. It's going to make a lot more sense when you see a scan. I'm going to go ahead and open up a new tab. And what I want you to do, let's go ahead and I'm going to blow this up for us. And what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and start running the scan while we wait. So go ahead and copy this here. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our IP address and that's how it knows what to scan. We're just going to hit enter on that. And now we're scanning. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and I want to run MMAP again with a dash dash help. And I want to talk through some of these settings in here so that you understand fully what we're doing. Now dash dash help is always great. As I said before, man pages are good as well. But let's talk about some things here. So we've got this host discovery section, which we're really not going to use in this course. But this is good for, say, a dash N. Say you want to do a ping sweep of the network. Well, you can do a ping scan, right, where you just sweep an entire subnet, a slash 24, for example, and see what's up very quick. A dash PN, maybe the host isn't acting like it's online, but you know it's there for sure. You can say dash PN and you can say, hey, I want to leave all the hosts or treat all the hosts as if they're online, even if they're not responding to my ping request or anything. So make yourself familiar with this kind of stuff. This is interesting and we'll cover a lot of this as we go in the course. But just for the first walkthrough while we're scanning, I think this is super important. Now, scan techniques. This dash SS, this comes back into play. TCP SYN is what it's called, but it's also known as the stealth scan. There's all these other types of scans. You're not going to need them. I, there's only maybe one scan out of all these that may be useful, but you're not going to need them through this course, and you'll probably never use anything but the SS and the SU 99% of the time. So for the scope of this course, that's what we're going to focus on. Now, the SS, we talked about connection-oriented protocols. We talked about TCP. Well, guess what? There's also UDP and there's 65,535 ports over there as well that we have to scan. Now, UDP is a connection less protocol. So what we're going to do when we scan it, let's go back to this scan. What we're going to do when we scan it is we're going to actually do that SU in here and I'll copy this syntax and just move it over so it looks a little cleaner. We're going to say something like, We could put it anywhere we want. The, the order doesn't matter, but we can say something like dash SU to scan for UDP. And the one little change that I make here, two changes actually, I take off the dash A and I do a dash P dash. Why do I, or I do a dash P I should say. Why do I do this? I do this because UDP takes forever to scan, absolutely forever to scan. Because it is a connectionless protocol, it does not have that instant response time. So when we scan UDP, typically we scan the top 1000. That is my recommendation to you or else you will be sitting here waiting for hours upon hours for a scan to finish. See, now our scan over here is already finished. If I were to run this UDP with the same thing, it will take forever. Going back into this before we get into the scan. You can see here that we can specify dash P of port. That's going to be very common for us. But here's where I really want to get into. We're doing a dash SV, a dash SC, a dash O here, all with the dash A, okay? So we're probing open ports for service information. We could say dash SV, and we could say dash SC, or we could pick these, you know, one or the other, or a mixture of some of these. But we can also do script scanning, which we'll get into script scanning here in a little bit as well. But we can do OS detection, where it goes out and it tries to define an operating system, and you're gonna see all this with our scan. But when we use dash A, it does it all for us. So why, why not use dash A? So you can see it does OS detection, version detection, script scanning, and trace route. Now there's one caveat to dash A, and we're gonna talk about this in another video in a thought process. It is much faster to remove the dash A and scan a dash P dash. Typically that'll come back much, much, much faster. Then what you can do is you can define the open ports. So say there's port 22, port 80. Okay, just go through this. 
you can specify those ports specifically. You could say dash P like we did in the example earlier with 80 and 443, and then do a dash A on those. Now that will just scan only these specific ports with all. Instead of going out to every single port and attempting to do all on every single port, it's just a little bit faster. Now if your wheels are spinning and you're thinking about it, maybe even you can script this, right? You can script something to say, hey, Nmap, I want to take I want to take these ports from a basic scan, anything that you pull back, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run a new scan on it with a dash A, only specifying the ports that we found. That gets your wheel spinning. This is where scripting becomes important. If you want an improvement on speed, for me personally, I've never ever done that. I don't think for me personally that it's made much of a difference. I just let my scans run as they run and I work on other things while scans are running. There's plenty of time to do other things while you're doing your scanning. So, and typically another thing to note is typically we're doing scanning when we're doing our OSINT as well. So if we start up a client assessment, one of the first things I'm gonna do is probably kick off a Nessa scan or an Nmap scan. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go look for those breach credentials or I'm gonna look for that juicy information on Google or social media or where I can find it and utilize that time while this is scanning or else I'll just be sitting on my hands doing nothing while these wait. So we're gonna take this information now and we're going to start reviewing it. So we have here our scan results and you can see the scan results come back and the first thing we notice are open ports. That's what we wanna look at. We wanna look at these open ports and we wanna look at what's running on these open ports. So we see here that what's running on port 22 is SSH. Okay, on top of that, it's got a version here for us. So open SSH 2.9 P2. And then we see Apache is running on port 80. We've also got Apache running on port 443. And we've got this RPC bind in 139. Now remember from the networking lesson, these kind of always play together. So we've got SMB open, basically Samba shares. And what we can do is first step is usually enumeration. Once we see this, we take the scan in, we scroll down a little bit as well, and we can look at some things and see, okay, there's no OS information. I found Linux here, 2.4.x, and it's most likely pulling that down from, from the, uh, the Apache. It's probably a best guess because it's running Red Hat that it's running Linux and taking a stab at it here, or may have actually determined that from sort of header or some other location. A lot of times, this isn't so sure as it's saying it is here. A lot of times it'll give you a percentage. So the OS is not always definitive as it is here. So we've got the OS, which could be useful for us later when we do enumeration, and you'll see how that comes into play. What I want you to take in right now is that so far we've got a scan result back. And that scan has gone out and it has looked for open ports doing that modified stealth handshake. So it says SYN, SYNAC, reset, RST. Doing that, it's found a few open ports. Now it is our job to look up the information that we are seeing on these open ports and try to find exploits on them. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm going to cover in the next video, we're gonna go kind of step by step and I'll talk through the methodology and why I attack certain ports first, what ports those are, how we can enumerate those ports, and then we'll enumerate everything, get all the details down. Once we have all the details down, we're gonna move into the section of exploitation. It's gonna get really fun, and we'll exploit this machine in multiple ways. So from here, just take apart or take that away from the lesson that you've officially successfully scanned this machine. I encourage you to maybe go back and take notes or to go back and scan it again, get the syntax down in your head, keep typing this out, remember it, this is the one thing you're probably gonna type out more than anything else. And then also go through and look at the different types of options you have there. If there's one that interests you, just run it against the machine, play around with it. This is your lab time, make the most of it. So for now, that's it. In the next video, we're gonna start enumerating these ports. So I will catch you over in the next video.